You want space, you want practicality, but you also want style. And perhaps you are sick and tired of SUVs. So here we are, Genesis G70 shooting brake. Now shooting brake is just a sleeker, smarter looking estate car. And I gotta be honest, I have always loved the look of G70 shooting brake. But in this cherry color, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And it turns heads wherever I go. So, shall we hop into this glossy, juicy cherry and see what it is made of? One, two, two three. Okay, so how does it feel to drive this car? It is very comfy because the suspension does a nice job absorbing all of the nasty bumps, potholes and imperfections. It is also quiet. Now this diesel engine is very well mannered because even when I floor it, <laughs> and let's be honest, my right foot is not exactly what you call a piece of feather. Will you hear it? Well, actually, don't hear it because there's no rattle coming through, but plenty of punch. I like this engine. <laughs> the eight-speed automatic gearbox is nicely tuned with the throttle. The gearbox doesn't ponder, it doesn't wander. It just gets on with the job because the last thing we want is a lazy and lazy diesel. Now the visibility here is very good, no blind spot in the front and the spite, the sexy rear end, you see plenty through the back window and when you flick the indicator there's a small camera that pops up, it's really handy so that you don't curb your alloys. It always amazes me when SUV lovers tell me, Anna, there's no better car for visibility than an SUV. Really? Is that so? Well, in my personal opinion, it all depends on the car and also how you adjust your bloody seat. You see, even in low seating sports cars, the visibility can often be excellent. But there's one thing you must do, <laughs> and that is to pay attention. The steering is nice and light at lower speeds, which means it's easy to maneuver this car in and out of car parks. And as you pick up some momentum, the steering is sharper and more responsive. Now, this is such a beautiful long distance cruiser. Although at higher speeds, there's a little bit of tightness, but overall, the ride is very peachy and it is cheap as chips to run. So on a long distance journey, I was averaging about six liters. This combined with a bit of B-roads, congested town, and I'm still below eight liters. Now, if this is not an excellent result, I don't know what is. hidden underneath the bonnets. I do like this engine bay and when you see these two supporting bars you know it's a good sign. We've got a 2.2 litre turbocharged diesel engine which produces 200 horses and 440 newton meters of torque. The power is being sent to all four wheels and it is being operated by an eight-speed automatic gearbox. Now this setup all-wheel drive diesel starts from just 60,000 Swiss francs in Switzerland. In the UK, for example, you only get rear-wheel drive diesel. And this starts from only 40,000 pounds. Really good value for money. And if you're doing fewer long-distance journeys, you might opt for the petrol version. And that's enough about the numbers under the bonnet. <laughs> onto the boot space electronically operated tailgates well sometimes you press go and it says no it's brilliant when it works but anyway 
The shape of the boot is very practical. We've got over 400 liters of space, some useful netting. You can fold the back seats using the clips here. There's no underfloor storage and that is enough about the boot space. Being a backseat passenger here is not bad at all. I have adjusted the front seat for my height and I still have plenty of knee room, decent headroom, although if you are significantly taller than me, things might start to get a little bit complicated. So just go for the midget friends. Middle seat, well, what can I say? I'd say don't bother. But I'll show you a very neat feature. With the buttons here, you can actually adjust the front seat. You can push it forwards, you could push it backwards, and you can even recline it. This comes in very, very handy. Otherwise, you get this beautiful kilted seat design that you get in the front. And well done, Genesis. <laughs> Let's go through the driving modes. What have we got here? E-car, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus, where the ESP is deactivated. I'm going to select Sport Mode and I'm going to smash the throttle pedal, <laughs> which certainly feels more pronounced than it does in Comfort Mode, yet it is all smooth and silky. The steering has got more weight added to it. It feels sharp, it feels responsive. <laughs> Actually, the handling on a twisty road around the corners is just superb. The car doesn't lean, it feels light, yet stable and secure. It is actually a perfect blend between fun and comfort, which is not that easy to achieve in a station wagon. So well done, Genesis. <laughs> nice job. Actually, I really like it. It's just the car is, for some strange reason, it feels engaging. So the cabin of G70 Shooting Brake and G70 Saloon isn't as super duper modern as you get with the GV70 or any Genesis SUV for that matter. But it is still very, very lovely. The quality of the materials, the fit and finish is superb. I do love this kilting design of the seats. This is all Alcantara, by the way, beautifully lined and it just feels delightful under the palm of your hands. But let's jump into practicality briefly. Large bowl of water it is. Can you fit that in the door bin? No, you can't. Nothing bulky will go without a fight, but you can pop that bottle in here, very good. There's plenty of storage space, USB port. Now the pocket down here is lined with Alcantara-ish material, I like that. And the same goes for the glove box. It's a sort of velvety lining. <laughs> Genesis has done very well. Nice steering wheel, paddle shifters, red stitching, clean and simple design when it comes to a digital driver's display. This is exactly what you need. Don't make your life complicated. The same goes for the shocker buttons down here. Very good. I like the gear lever. Down here you've got shocker buttons for your driving mode, your camera, automatic start and stop button, deactivation. But anyway, let's move on to this infotainment system. By the way, this is the only thing that's been nicked from Hyundai, but it's a good thing. So I don't see a reason why you shouldn't do that. The system itself is easy, straightforward, very intuitive. If you don't like it, just plug in your Apple CarPlay or your Android. Let's have a quick look at the graphics. These are crisp, crystal clear. The system itself is just so easy to navigate through and quick to respond to the touch of your finger. But you also have shortcut buttons down here. Map, navigation, radio, media, etc. To make your life easier, you also have physical knobs for volume control, tracks, also physical knobs for climate control, seat heating, seat cooling, this is all physical buttoning. 
makes your life much simpler. So if you like this sort of a little bit more traditional way of operating your, your car, this might just be the car for you. Wireless mobile charging, very good, 12 volt socket, USB ports. Okay, winner, winner, one sausage dinner. I really like this cabin. Though I probably, mm, the red makes things a bit more cheerful, but I would still go for something a bit lighter. What color would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. Now, it might be that you have never heard of Genesis before, and it is quite possible that Genesis is not even available in your country. They're slowly but surely expanding. But essentially, they're part of the Kia Hyundai group, which I only see as a good thing because they've got all the research and development plus resources, expertise available to them, which only makes Genesis cars better. Now, I've heard some people saying that this is nothing but a luxury Hyundai. Really? I bet you, person who says that has never driven Genesis before. I promise you, this is a very different car to Hyundai. It's just a different league. Now, how I would describe Genesis, it is not a luxury car. It is a premium car with luxury service. Depending on a country, but for example, in Switzerland, what you get with Genesis is free servicing for five years and when your car is due for servicing, they'll come and collect it from your home, work, whatever. They'll give you a courtesy car, smart selling, and then once they're finished with servicing, they'll drop it off. Now, all of a sudden, the likes of Audi, BMW, hmm, starts to look a lot less appealing, doesn't it? And by the way, small disclaimer, I am not being paid to say that. I'm an on roads. I can say whatever I want. Do I like Genesis? G70 shooting brake. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I wasn't that excited about driving this car, but now I've driven it for several weeks through Switzerland, France, Monaco, Italy. I absolutely love it. And I tell you what, everybody is looking at me. Everybody. Why? Because this car in this color looks gorgeous elegant and very unique. I wonder what do you think of Genesis as a brand and this particular car? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you very very soon. Bye!